Good day. In this video, we're going to look at some deductions based on graphs. We're going to look at this writing and others that explain what it means with respect to these two graphs. Everything in this video will apply to trigonometric and algebraic graphs. There is no difference. This blue graph over here is called f f of x equals to y equals to cos 2x. So it's f of x equals to cos 2x. It runs from x is an element of minus 180 on this side, included, up to 180 degrees on the right-hand side, included, there. We read a graph from left to right. That's why I put a few arrows in here. So if you move down here, this graph is going down, then it's going up, then it's going down, and then it's going up. Decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. The red graph over here is called g of x equals to y equals to sine x plus 30 degrees. Its name is g, written over there. It starts over here at minus 180 included, goes down, goes up, goes down, and stops at 180 degrees. It decreases increases, decreases. Here you have your y-axis and there you have your x-axis, like in any Cartesian plane. For the purpose of the rest of this video, we're just going to work with this half of the graph. So we're going to work here from the y-axis towards the right-hand side from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. But let's start there. I'm quickly going to revise what everything means and then I'm going to get rid of most of the information except the graphs. On the side here it says f of x equals to cos 2x, g of x equals to sine x plus 30 degrees, like I already said. Now the question starts by saying determine the value or values of x, where x is from 0 degrees included up until 180 degrees excluded, for which, and then we'll handle the questions. Just showing you quickly, here is the y-axis, here is the x-axis. The graph starts here at 0 degrees included, included goes all the way to 180 on this side, excluded and excluded. Here is the G graph written on there. Here is the F graph written on there. We have all the x-intercepts available. There's 45 degrees. There's 135 degrees. There's 150 degrees. The maximum value on both graphs is 1, and the minimum value on this graph here is minus 1, and there it is minus half. It's not the minus a half of the whole graph, but just for this purpose of this video. The two graphs intersect here at 20 degrees at 0,77, and it also intersects here at 140 degrees at 0,17. Those two decimals are rounded off. All the questions in this video will come from this start. Determine the value of values of x, where, and then limit our domain for which. So we have to find the x values that answers to the problems. The first question asks, where is f of x equals to 0? There is my x-axis, there is my y-axis, and that is the red graph we're going to work with now called f. What they're asking is, where is f on the x-axis? In other words, where is y equal to 0, where the graph cuts that line? And that is at 45 degrees and at 135 degrees. So x is equal to 35 degrees or x is equal to 135 degrees. The next question asks, where is f of x bigger than 0? It means where is f above the x-axis and y is not allowed to be 0. There is no equal there in the inequality. So your answer is x is bigger than equal to 0 degrees and smaller than 45 degrees. It's in other words, from there up to there, this graph is above the x-axis, and from there to there, x is bigger than 135 degrees and smaller than 180 degrees. If you don't like writing it in set builder notation, you can also write it in interval notation. This and this is the same answer. Please stop the video and get your brain around this. The next question asks, where is f of x bigger and equal to 0? It means, where is f above and on the x-axis? 
The answer is x is bigger than equal to 0, x is smaller than equal to 45 degrees, or x is bigger than equal to 135 degrees, and x is smaller than 180 degrees. Remember, the x is ex 180 degrees is excluded in our domain, so we can never put him in one of our answers. You can write that same answer in this way in interval notation if it suits you better. Please stop the video and get your brain around these three questions. Now we're going to do some questions on the G graph. That's the, I made the G graph red now. It says G over there. They're asking where is G of X equal to zero? I always indicate it in blue over there. So the answer is X equals 250 degrees. That is where this graph is equal to zero. The next question asks, where is G of X smaller than zero? In other words, where is it under the X axis? And the answer it is that little area there. So X is bigger than 150 degrees and X is smaller than 180 degrees. And if you like, you can write it in interval notation, which will look like this. The next question asks, where is G of X smaller and equal to zero? The answer will be X is bigger than equal to 150 degrees and X is smaller than 180 degrees, that blue area there. If you want to, you can write it in interval notation like this. The next question asks, where is G of X equals to a half? Let's get used to this. This half is where Y is equal to a half. So where is Y equals to a half equal to the G of X graph? I drew a green line here where Y is equal to a half. The question is asking, where is G of X equal to this green line? So that means over there and over there. And yes, the answer is x equals to 0 degrees at that blue dot, or x equals to 120 degrees at that blue dot. Please stop the video and get your brain around this. The next question asks, where is g of x, that red graph, bigger and equal to a half? The answer is x is bigger than equal to naught, and x is smaller than equal to 120 degrees, that blue part there, including where it crosses the green line. Maybe we can write it this way too. Please stop the video and get your brain around these five writings and how the answers work. Because we're now going to do interpretation between the two graphs, I made the G graph red and the F graph I made green. Remember they start on the Y axis, included, and they are not included on 180 degrees. They meet at 140 degrees here and also at 20 degrees there. The question says, where is f of x smaller than g of x? They're asking, where is the green graph below the g graph? Other people like to see where is the g above the f. I like this one. So where is the green graph smaller than the red graph? That is the blue part. So it's x is bigger than 20 degrees and x is smaller than 140 degrees. You may also write it in interval notation. Please stop the video and get your brain around this. The next one they ask, where is f of x bigger than g of x? It's asking where is the green graph bigger than the, g, the red graph? Where is f of x bigger than g of x? Where f is above g? Some people want to say where g is under f. That'll be those two blue pieces. So it's x is bigger than equal to naught, that x is smaller than 20 degrees, or x is bigger than 140 degrees, and x is smaller than 180 degrees. And you may write it in interval notation like this. Please stop the video and get your brain around these two questions. The next question asks, where is g of x bigger than equal to f of x? Is asking where is G above and equal to F? So where is the red graph bigger and equal to the green graph? It's that blue area I colored in there, including and in including the two intersections. So X is bigger and equal to 20 degrees, and X is smaller and equal to 140 degrees. You may write it in interval notation like this. Please stop the video and get your brain around this question. And we're going to do interaction between f and g. Sounds like this. f of x times g of x is bigger or smaller than something. f of x divided by g of x is equal or bigger and smaller than something. 
This question asks, where is f of x times g of x equal to 0? With multiplication, if one of them is equal to 0, the answer will be 0. So that is where f or g or both of them are equal to 0. The answer is x is equal to 45 degrees or x is equal to 135 degrees or x is equal to 150 degrees. On those black dots, either one or both of them are equal to 0. That will make this multiplication sum equal to 0. Please stop the video and get your brain around that. Next question asks, where is f of x times g of x bigger than equal to 0? Bigger than 0 in this case means positive. You should remember that a plus times a plus will give you a positive. Or a minus times a minus will give you a positive. And f or g or both must be equal to 0. The red graph is positive from there to there, including the 150. The green graph is positive from there to there, including, and also positive from there to there, including, excluding there. I just rewrote this question because you can't write this in an answer. So here is the question again. So our final answer is x is bigger than equal to 0 degrees and x is smaller than 45 degrees. Or x is bigger than equal to 135 degrees and x is smaller than equal to 150 degrees. In other words, in that area there, if you look up, you'll see both the graphs are positive between those two x values. And also between there and there, including those numbers, they're still both above the x-axis. There is no place where they're both negative. You may also write the answer in interval notation like this. Please stop the video and get your brain around this one, not for the faint of heart. The next question asks, where does f of x divide by g of x equal to 0? In a division question, the bottom cannot equal to 0, the top can be 0 and must be 0. So the answer is x equals to 45 degrees or x equals to 135 degrees. Stop the video and get your brain around this question. The next question asks, where is f of x divided by g of x bigger than 0? In other words, where is this going to give us a positive answer? In division, a positive divided by a positive will give us a positive, and a negative divided by a negative will give us a positive. The answer is then, x is bigger than or equal to 0 degrees, and x is smaller than 45 degrees. Or, x is bigger than 135 degrees, and x is smaller than 150 degrees. We did it with the multiplication just now. Get your brain around this yourself. You may also write it in interval notation like this. From here you'll have to stop the video to watch it what I, how I got the answers. First one asks, where is f of x times g of x smaller than 0? Because it's multiplication, a minus times a positive will give me a negative, or a positive times a negative will give me a negative. So one of the graphs must be positive and the other one negative at that same x value. And f of x and g of x is not allowed to be 0. There is no equal there. The answer is x is bigger than 45 degrees and x is smaller than 135 degrees or x is bigger than 150 degrees and x is smaller than 180 degrees. In that blue area there and in that blue area there, excluding the circles. You may also write it in interval notation like this. Please stop the video and get your brain around this one. The next question asks, where is f of x divided by g of x smaller than or equal to 0? A negative divided by a positive will give you a negative. A positive divided by a negative will give you a negative. And g of x is not allowed to be 0. It will make it undefined. g of x is at the bottom. There's an equal over here. I'm not allowed to make g of x equal to 0. This answer will be x is bigger than or equal to 45 degrees and x is smaller than or equal to 135 degrees or x is bigger than 150 degrees and x is smaller than 180 degrees in that blue areas including all this including excluding including excluding you may write the answer in interval notation like this stop the video and get your brain around this question this question asks where is x times the graph of f of x smaller than or equal to 0. 
In this case, we're going to check where this red line, where all the x's lie, that's the x-axis, and the green graph are related to each other. So we need where x times the f of x is smaller than or equal to 0, so we want a negative. x is positive everywhere here, so we need the places where the f graph is negative, which is here. In other words, a positive divided by a negative will give us a negative. Smaller than 0 means negative, but the x must, can also be equal to 0, and f of x can also be equal to 0. So your final answer is x is equal to 0 degrees, or x is bigger than equal to 45 degrees, and x is smaller than equal to 135 degrees. You may also write it in interval notation. It's in those blue areas. So at that point, from that point including, all the way there, including that point. That is where the x's are positive while the f is negative. Stop the video and get your brain around this one. The last part is for grade 12's only. It says here, f accent of x. And you will learn that when you get to grade 12 means the gradient or the slope of f. If they say this ugly looking thing is bigger than zero, it means the slope is positive, it's going up. If they say this ugly thing is smaller than zero, it means the slope is negative, the slope is going down. We're just going to do it with the f graph. So here's our question. It's asking where is the slope of the f graph, the green one, times the g of x graph, the red graph positive. So we need a positive gradient and a positive graph or a negative gradient with a negative graph. The answer is x is bigger than 90 degrees and x is smaller than 150 degrees. From here to there, the green graph has got a positive gradient, it's going up, and at the same time, the g graph is above the x-axis. You also write it in interval notation. Stop the video and get your brain around this one. Next question asks, where is x times the gradient of g of x negative? And the answer is, x is bigger than or equal to 60 degrees, and x is smaller than or equal to 180 degrees, or at x equals to 0. You will have to stop the video and get your brain around this yourself. This is the place in this blue area over here, where x is positive and the gradient of this guy is negative. And also here, x is 0, and that makes this multiplication sum equal to 0. Got to get your brain around that yourself. And at the turning point, the gradient is 0, so it's over here. Sort this out yourself, please. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked the video and subscribe to the channel. If you run into any such kind of questions that troubles you, you may send a clear WhatsApp photo of your problem to this number and a clear WhatsApp photo of where you tried it. Then we will try and solve the problem and send back an answer to you as soon as possible. Enjoy deductions with graphs.